Oh, hi. How are you all doing? You feeling cooped up? Like you can't get out of the house like there's a worldwide pandemic quarantine? Well, I've got your solution. Over here in my carport, I have set up a gym called Philippos Training. I'm working on an actual logo and a sign. But for now, I have this tire. I've got weights, I've got bars, and there's an introductory membership fee of $200 plus $300 per month. I'm price gouging, but I throw in one roll of toilet paper. So if you're interested in that, you need to send me an email. No, not email. Send me a message through the Teams channel via your own chat. Okay? All right. Be weak or be strong. Hi, Bear Creek, and welcome to the first ever episode of the Middle School Video Podcast, um, Chapel Podcast, hosted and produced by yours truly, but starring our incredible middle school teachers. Uh, though we cannot meet in person, our desire is to continue uh, discussion surrounding the importance of our formation into people of wisdom, compassion, and courage, uh, equipped to effectively and fervently fulfill our calling as ambassadors of God's kingdom. So who better to join us for this first ever edition than our very own dearly beloved, Mr. Burns. Hello, Mr. Hello. Burns. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. How are you doing? How are you and uh, Mrs. Burns holding up? Uh, the wonderful Mrs. Burns and I are holding up very well. Um, we love getting to hang out together. So, I mean, we have been baking, we've been reading together, we've been going on walks, keeping social distancing, of course. Um, but the big joke in our house has been that uh, Newton, when he was quarantined, Isaac Newton ended up doing calculus, creating calculus during his quarantine, and we have baked snickerdoodles. So, not <laughs> quite as good enough for us. I was going to ask, what's the, what's the thing that you've baked that you're most proud of? Would it be snickerdoodles? Oh, definitely. Yeah. We also have been doing these pumpkin muffins that we love because in our house, it's always pumpkin spice time. Doesn't matter what time of year it is. So we did these pumpkin spice muffins and they were really good. They were also free of every allergen that you could possibly imagine. Nice. So friendly nice. for everyone. Nice. I, uh, on one of our first days quarantined, I made dairy-free, gluten-free chocolate chip oatmeal cookies. And I, I'm going to be honest, they turned out pretty well. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, We'll have to have like a baking share, all the things we've learned how to bake when we get back. We should. We should. With gluten-free baking, it either goes really well or it turns into this big puddle of liquid. So as yes. long as you didn't get that, it turned out pretty well. Yeah, very good. Okay, well, um, thanks again for joining me. I wanted to um, just provide students, we just wanted to provide an opportunity to continue to engage in some important conversations with all of you. Um, our heartbeat is for us all to continue to take steps forward in our faith. Um, Mr. Burns and I were in the, that same boat wanting to become um, people who are growing in our love for the Lord and our love for um, other people. So a topic that was on my mind and was embedded in our chapel curriculum moving forward was just, um, it had to do with compassion and, and really the model that Jesus lays out of recognizing the needs of others. And so Mr. Burns, I wanted to ask you just, um, just my perception as I read the scriptures, um, there's so many places where Jesus not only identifies people in need, but seems to specifically have a heart for people who are afraid, um, people who are fearful. Um, obviously, that's happening today and in, in everything that's going on with COVID, and um, some of our students might be experiencing higher levels of anxiety, whether because of the um, virus or because of just being quarantined at home. Um, but I was curious, do you see that theme throughout the Gospels? And if so, um, why do you think that surfaces so much where Jesus is concerned for um, the fears uh, of other people? Yeah, I absolutely see Jesus encountering people who are in a state of fear when he runs into them. Um, there are so many examples of fear in the Gospels that to go through them can take hours. Um, just of Jesus finding people who... Um, for whatever reason, find themselves in social settings or life circumstances where there's a lot of vulnerability, where there's a lot of um, oppression going on in their life, and they're afraid of what's going to happen to me. Um, 
particularly, I think we see this a couple times with the disciples. So I, for today, I'll, I'll just focus on a couple stories with the disciples. One that immediately came to mind and maybe came to your mind as well was when Jesus is with the disciples in the boat. Um, this comes up in Mark 4. It also comes up in uh, Matthew and Luke's Gospels. Um, the story of Jesus in a boat on the Sea of Galilee in this turbulent weather where everything's chaotic around them and the disciples are freaking out because everything around them is falling apart. They think this boat's going to crash, this boat's going to break up, and they're going to die. And Jesus wakes up, he calms the storm, and all of a sudden, the minute that Jesus is on the scene, which he was there the whole time, the minute Jesus wakes up from sleeping, everything is calm. Everything is, all, all the chaos around them just stops. Um, and that, that just imagery of, of the chaos has really been on my heart recently, because the world kind of feels like that right now. Chaos everywhere and jesus jesus is right there with us in it right he can he, he calms the storms around us um so that's that's been a story that's been in my mind but also and some of my students have heard me talk about this story that i've been reading over and over um since transfiguration sunday is the story of the transfiguration where peter james and john go up on a mountain with jesus and jesus transfigures before their eyes he becomes his full glory the image of God standing right in front of Peter, James, and John. And Peter's like, should we be here? Like, is this, is this where we should be, right? And Jesus is sitting with Elijah and Moses. And Peter and the, the other disciples, they throw themselves on the ground and they're covering their face and they're trembling. They are shaking because they're so afraid. And what Jesus does is he touches them and he says, don't be afraid. And then when they look up, everything is gone except Jesus. All they see is his face. So there's something about Jesus and his presence that calms us, that brings peace to these chaotic situations. Um, those, are the, those are two examples that I've been thinking a lot about. But you ask the question, why do I think that is? Why do I think there's fear? Why do I think this theme of people being afraid comes up? And I would say the theme of people being afraid comes up ever since Genesis 3 right? So ever since we are taken away from God's presence, ever since we have been separated from our real home, which is God's presence, we are exposed. We are vulnerable. We are not where we're supposed to be because where we're supposed to be is with God's presence, in his presence, with him. Like that's what we were designed for. And when we have sin entering this picture between God and humanity, we're, we're alone. We're isolated. We are distanced from the one who created us and that's scary, right? So since Genesis 3, we're seeing a people who live in fear. And particularly when we see Jesus, he is going to the people in society who are extremely vulnerable, the widows, the orphans, um, the, the sinners, those who society would reject and say, you're not welcome here. You have to go out. Or, or even the people who were sick in the New Testament, the lepers, who had to walk around with bells shouting out to people, unclean, unclean, unclean. They can't even be in people's presence. And Jesus goes to them. And so what you're seeing is Jesus going to the people who are going to naturally have a lot of fear and anxiety um, and, and just exposure because of the world that we live in ever since Genesis 3, um, being away from God and his presence. But when Jesus comes, he is the presence of God and he touches us, right? He, and he says, do not be afraid. And everything stops at that point. Does that does that help with that question a little bit, or so um, any clear? Yeah, I, I was thinking as you were talking, I was almost like actually welling up in tears a little bit because I think it just it hits me in a personal way. Um, partially right now, just because um, my older son Wade is really struggling with fear at night, and you know we pray over him every evening and we tell him that um, God is with you, that Jesus loves you, that God is watching over you. And um, some of the times he gets out of bed, he says, he says, I, how do I know that God is with me? I don't, I don't feel like he's with me right now. I don't know. I just was thinking, I wonder if any of our kids would, um, our students, even at Bear Creek right now are thinking that, like, what would you say to somebody who just would say, I just don't feel God's presence right now. How do I get to that point where, where Jesus touches me um, in that real way and, and I can experience his peace amidst my fear? What would you say to them? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's something I, you know, I as a, as an adult struggle with fear. 
Um, so very much have had those times where I'm like, Jesus, where are you? Right? I have had very real tangible moments in my life where I am like, God's presence is not here. It is gone. Um, right? Because there's we, we can say it all day long. God's with you. God's here. God's here. But when it when everything feels so chaotic, it can be hard to find God in those moments um, when things feel chaotic. Where is he? Um, and what I tend to say to people, <laughs> um, I don't know if this is helpful or not, but something that helps me is just really knowing the ways that I do connect with God. Um, how even when circumstances are totally chaotic, even when life seems so disjointed and all over the place, one thing that I come back to is how do I, how has God made me and how can I connect with him when everything else is going on. So for me personally, it's finding, I connect with God really well through music. So whenever students come in my room, usually there's music playing, if I'm not having a class, right? There's music going um, and I'm singing because that is how I connect with God. Um, I've always struggled with reading and so reading isn't like my first go-to for um, connecting with God, but um, for some people it is. My wife, she's a reader. And so she'll go and read novels, she'll read the Psalms, she'll read the New Testament, and instantly she's like, God is here, his, his spirit is with us, right? Um, I think finding what, what, how God has made you and how he connects with you, like it might be music, it might be reading, the, it might be reading scripture, it might be um, painting, drawing, like how do you sense God delighting in you as his, like, as his glorious creation? Um, sometimes it's getting out in nature. That's what I would say. Um, Good. And like, continue to push in to the reality of God being there even when you can't feel him and invite him into that space. That's what I would say. That's awesome. Okay, cool. That's great. Hey, everyone. I decided to pause the conversation there for sake of time. There are a couple more questions that I had for Mr. Burns, so stop by next week to catch the end of our conversation. Until then.